What's up guys, Econ John here. Welcome to our second part in our five part video series on intermediate Marxist economics. Uh, in this video, we're gonna introduce the concept of input output tables. Let's go. So recall that the labor theory of value is mathematically expressed as P is equal to C plus V plus SVU in which the price of a commodity is comprised of payments to constant capital, labor and profits. Having used this as a tool to decompose the price of a single good, we ask the following question. How are intermediate goods produced? And is there in fact exploitation among producers? Uh, the way we do this is by employing the use of a production table or input output table. Uh, this table considers the production of final goods and the use of intermediate goods in production. Uh, this is useful because it allows us to observe how resources are distributed and you know what resources are used in the production process so your standard input output table looks like this so where you have C V S V and P along the top and along the side you have sector C sector V sector S V and you have this total used or produced term at the bottom so our columns indicate the value of machinery raw materials uh, and living labor profits and total value our values AIJ represents the quantity of value used in each sector. Um, with regards to the first three rows, they indicate the sector is dedicated to production of machinery, workers, uh, and capitalist goods respectively. Our fourth row is just a sum total of the rows above. Uh, this is useful because we can assign a clear interpretation to each cell. Our first cell is interpreted as the constant capital used in the production of constant capital. And, you know, if we were to look at, you know, sector C for V, right, we look at the amount of the amount of labor value that is used in the production of constant capital. So what you have is that, you know, you have the factories that the workers go to and then you have the input that goes to each factory to go and produce those inputs themselves. So if we were to mathematically represent it. So we would use this system of linear equations where our left hand side denotes the composition of value in each sector denoted by our subscript and our right hand side is the distribution of resources to each sector uh, we should note that the diagonal terms right such as the constant capital use in uh in uh the production of constant capital the value used in the production of wages right and the profits that are used in the in, the in you know the production of surplus value right are interpreted as inventory requirements of each term and this is the amount of own production necessary for production in each sector i mean i've seen uh, another definition of that you know where it goes and says final demands but uh clearly i think that it's much more appropriate to go and interpret it as input requirements because you know at power plants for example they use electricity to go and power their computers so the uniqueness of this approach is that we can observe the chain reaction where the source of profits are for each industry and where values are going as in we have a direction where everything is going so this is the first part of input output tables there's another two parts on this and i'll see you in the next video